Hello and welcome back to Work Wednesday. I'm Sheen, your host, and today we're joined by Matthew, who is a professional magician. I did the intro right this time. <laughs> so Matthew, what are we talking about today? So today we're talking about confidence. Great, let's hear it. This is a question I get often, and okay. I'm sure you do as well, which is how do you become more confident? How would you become more confident? Yes, and you are someone who performs all the time. You mm. started performing on the streets and stuff, and then now you're a professional. <laughs> that sounds sound wrong. Like a homeless... <laughs> started performing on the streets, made up to the red light district, and now <laughs> yeah. he's come out Corner. of that. And he performs magic for a living. <laughs> well done, well done. <laughs> You've come a long yeah, way. I've come a long way, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, so that definitely... <laughs> we'll leave you that in, are we? We will we'll leave, leave that. that in. Just <laughs> cruise to the silence and then we move on. Um, but, yeah, that requires a lot of confidence. Yeah. And you're a confident person. So tell us, how did you get there? I think um, it was a... Was it a slow process? I don't know. I think magic mm. was the tool I used to learn it. Okay. I think, as far as I'm aware, as a kid, I was quite... Um, curious about things. I was, I was always been a people watcher, mm -hmm. so I've enjoyed watching people and trying to understand them. Like mm -hmm. I find people fascinating. People mm -hmm. and magic are like my two big things. Mm -hmm. um, but I think confidence is something which was learned over a period of time of observing and also trying to learn and understand how to. Um, it's difficult because there's this weird dichotomy, and I think that's the right word of. Pretending to be confident, mm -hmm. therefore you are. Yes. Because it's other people's perception of the confidence. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. But if you're just pretending, then are you actually being confident? And there's this kind of weird thing going on, That's such which a is good like, question. so if I'm pretending to be confident, but people perceive me as confident, then mm. am I being confident or not? But eventually, I think you just get to a point where you build up the mindset of, by pretending to be confident, people assume I'm confident, therefore I am. Mm. So therefore, you just carry on with that mm. process. Oh, this, going, this is going a bit too far. Or no, is it, does that make sense? Meta again. Yeah. No, but this is this is really on point because uh, we've been talking about this with Ali as well, where he was like, "Oh, I, I think everyone is a bundle of insecurities." You know how there's again there's the dichotomy of people are either a bundle of insecurities or they're just logical beings. But I think we're all bundle of insecurities, and although we do come across as confident, I also always wonder this thing about because we all fake it, right, sometimes, until you make it when it comes to being confident. I don't know if I am faking it, or is it just, because we are all different with different people, right? For example, yeah. with a friend, you're different. If you meet someone for the first time, you're different. And I wonder if that level of like pretense, if that's what you can call it, also applies to when you are being confident, if that's just the outside veneer that you put, you know? Yeah. It's very interesting. It, it's, it's like we all play a different character. Yeah, we right? do. Like with my my family. Ah, oh man. I don't know. <laughs> See, it's interesting when you dig deep. I think when you're like, if I was to go and visit, uh, I don't know, a bunch of priests or a bunch of nuns, mm. I would be, I'd behave in a certain way. Yes. Like it goes through another filter. Yes. Um, and then if you were to go and, I don't know, do a talk at a school or something, mm -hmm. it then goes through another filter of, yes. I need to be this sort of a human being because I need to be responsible. Um, so I think that there's something which I like in people where they are just themselves all of the time. Regardless of the scenario, they are just them. There's something I admire in those people. Are there people like this? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they don't change, they don't change for the anybody. way they are. They just are what they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I find it really, like, I admire it because <clears throat> it's, it's, um, oh, what's the word? Like, it's that whole of, like, giving zero fucks kind of attitude <laughs> to life. And I really admire that because it's yeah. like, man, I can just do whatever I, or the, the way I picture it, at least, is I can do whatever I want. Mm. And therefore, it's just, like, take me for who I am or not. Or not. Like, yeah. what a great way to live. Yeah, Nobody I know. Cares. Um, that must be very freeing. <laughs> yeah, but I think if you're working, if you're working for any kind of a business or a company, you can't be that person. You can't you're behave representing the same way. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's it's generally difficult for people to do that unless they are like completely have autonomy over their life. Yeah. Like they're self-employed or they're part of um, a company which allows that mm. sort of freedom. Mm -hmm. um, but it is interesting about how people play different roles for different different scenarios and um, in front of different people. Yes. 
That's really interesting. But also I was thinking about this just now. You you must have felt this too because you you perform. You know how there are, with different groups of people, there is a group of people where you will feel like I can smash this, right? Like, yeah. I have no worries here. I know I am going to be great. So I feel like that's genuine confidence, right? Because you know you have no fear inside of you and you're not faking it. You feel like you've got this. Yeah. But then sometimes you feel not like this and you feel like oh a bit on edge a bit anxious about it thinking oh i hope this goes well etc and then you might still come across as confident because this is what you've worked on and you know how to project that then i feel like i'm definitely speaking for myself here whenever i'm giving presentations there are groups of people that i know i can own this audience i'm fine but then for example during my viva where i had to present to examiners then that's different and i there is a level inside that's not feeling confident at all but then on the outside i will still project the confidence so for me that that shows a difference of sometimes you feel it sometimes you fake it kind of thing i think that all boils down to the again it comes down to co the context yeah if you're being judged mm. then you don't feel as confident yeah <laughs> but if you're not being judged then you're fine then you're fine yeah so i think it's and <laughs> the irony of that is that depends not necessarily, but like in the context of being examined, everyone's yes. going to feel nervous and yes. a little bit kind of, am mm. I good enough? Mm -hmm. Like kind of imposter syndrome stuff. But I think in other scenarios where you're with a group of people that are judgmental, mm. that's based on their own insecurities. Yes. So it's ironic that their own insecurities or lack of confidence in themselves mm. is then projected onto others to then yeah. make them feel like a lack of Oh gosh, confidence. this is a vicious cycle. <laughs> it, and it, it really is. Because yeah. when you meet a group of people that are just happy within themselves and mm. the culture they've got between themselves mm. is quite open and nobody really is judging each other, yeah. then that that builds a culture of that attitude. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're in a group of people which are always like judging somebody else's decisions, like, mm -hmm. oh, you'll, you'll never do that, mate. Like, don't even bother yeah. trying. Or, yeah. you know, you'll, you'll never achieve that or accomplish yeah. that. Um, it's the classic scenario of taking a social dynamic and then one person within that dynamic mm. either wants to try something different or deviate from their role in the group. Mm -hmm. So the classic example is like the person which is overweight in the group of guys. Right. Like the, the, the fat guy. Yeah. And if there's a group of lads who are all poking fun at each other, mm -hmm. he's like the guy that gets all of the, the fat pokey jokes. There's right. another guy who gets all of the, I don't know, a bit geeky jokes sure. or there's another guy that gets all the whatever jokes yeah like being terrible with the ladies or whatever right. or the ladies man like <laughs> everyone's, ladies everyone's man. got their character right in a, in a right. group but as soon as the guy that's overweight wants to lose weight mm. or the guy who's a geek wants to become cool become cool yeah then the group because everyone's secure in that group then wants to maintain the status quo because they're comfortable mm. within that they understand the boundaries everyone's got their own role mm. and where they sit in that group yeah when somebody wants to make change mm then everybody in that group is going to try and fight against that person making change. Oh, wow. Which is based on their own insecurities yes. of that group. Then what happens kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Whereas if you find a group of people which are just like, like g each other up and yeah. say, yeah, 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 definitely do it, definitely mm. do it, you've got this. Mm. Then that um, uh, perpetuates like growth as a group rather than maintaining an old group of friends which right. have like these old ways. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I find it interesting to see how those groups operate. I know. I also love people watching. Oh, it's, it's the best. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. It oh really my is good God. Fun. <laughs> yeah, it's just so good. <laughs> I love it, especially, you know, looking at how people interact with different people. If you watch one person and how they interact with interactions change with different people it's so interesting mm. and i feel the same about myself which is why i always think about oh why did i behave differently here to here and i do ask myself the question whether i am confident or am i faking it and i still don't know I, yeah. why do why do you do that why do i question mm. it um what scenario would like trigger uh, that response so because uh, shall I throw Ali under the bus here? Yeah, I think I should. <laughs> <laughs> because we had a chat with Ali recently. And um, so, you know, there's a big move coming up for me. Sure. And I am quite anxious about it just because I am usually a planner and I like to know how things are going to work out in the short term and generally in the long term. Because I'm unable to plan this at the moment, there's a lot of things in the air, I don't have days, etc. So it's quite troubling for me because right. I can't, I don't feel comfortable with that. And Ali was surprised. He was like, I thought you were a confident person, 
But then the more I got to know you, I realized that you do have these insecurities and you, you do have things that are, you know, not in line with what a confident person would feel like. And then that's when we were talking about how people are just bundles of insecurities. And the more you get to know someone, the more you get to know their insecurities, because mm -hmm. otherwise you assume that they, they are just logical beings. Um, and yeah, then I've been thinking about it being like, oh, is that true? Like, okay, yes, I do. I don't think I put on a facade of being confident, but I don't know if what I project is different to what is inside. Right. Mm. I think everyone has insecurities. Oh yeah. Like, I don't think that's... I think it's also based on the scenario as well. Because it's quite, I mean, moving to a different country is quite a big move anyway. Yeah. So I think anyone that's moving to another country who, I assume you don't know anyone out there, or many people and there. Yeah, I like know a few people, people, yeah. Um, but I assume you don't know what it's like to live no. there or stay there for any prolonged period no. of time. Yeah. So I think if I was moving, then I'd be feeling a little bit kind of nervous about mm. that and excited and all those yeah, other things come mix. with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see where you're coming from, mm. like being a difficult move. Yes. Um, yeah. I think with feeling confident and like projecting confidence and then feeling what you're, you're feeling. Mm. Hmm. That's it, yeah. I think... Hmm. I'm trying to think of a scenario that I can put myself in to mm. then get an idea of... To get an idea of that. I don't know. It's a difficult one. It it's is. Such a, it's such a big, like... Yeah. yeah. But I don't think there's anyone who is 100% confident all the time throughout their life. Uh, no, unless they're faking it. Yeah, because I think you can project confidence all the time, but it doesn't mean that you're feeling it all the time. Mm. And yeah, I feel like going back to our initial question, how do you train yourself to become more confident if you're not? Um jumping into fear is probably the biggest thing mm. and i think the more like whenever i've had an awkward situation or an mm. awkward thing happen mm. i've always tried to go down the path of most resistance right to feel the awkwardness of course to live through that mm. so for example um perhaps at a restaurant somebody might serve some food and there might be like a hair or something in the food mm. Some people would not deal with that. They can't deal with sending the food back. Oh, it's yeah. Like, oh, no, I'll just eat the food. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's no one's fault. Like, yeah. Ugh. Actually, it, look, you paid for that thing. Mm. And it's the restaurant's job to serve food that's correct. Mm -hmm. um, so the way I now frame it is the restaurant should know about the mistake they've made yeah. for future clientele. So oh, I'm, yeah. I'm helping the restaurant out. Sure. So the, the, the framing of my complaint is, oh, th there's a hair in the food just to let you know. And then mm. that, usually the response is, oh, I'm so sorry about uh, that. I'll, I'll, I'll take care it of it. Like, yeah. And the, the wrong way of going about it is to get all angry and uptight. About and create a it. scene. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's not helping anyone. No. And the intention behind that is I want my food being served properly because it's all about me, me, me. Mm. Whereas if it's framed around giving something back to the restaurant to help them out. Yeah. Then there's... Um, I'm trying to pull this back onto the confidence thing. Yeah. But there is like a confidence within that. Mm. But it just depends on the framing. Does that make sense? Yes. So like viewing the world around you, um, depending on how you frame it in your own head or whatever story you tell, mm. Mm. Um, changes the perspective of how that confidence gets perceived. Yeah. Oh, I hope yeah. that makes sense. I was a bit rambling in my own head then. <laughs> no, that, that, that story made sense. I, I get that and really reframing in your mind how you see things helps you be more confident about things, basically. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but to, sorry, to pull it back to how do you become more confident mm. um, and taking the, uh, the, the path of most resistance, mm. I think what I realised is actually the worst thing that could happen to anybody is they die. Mm. If you take... Well, it's true. Yeah. If you take one path, am I going to die if I complain about this food? No. Probably not. Am I going to die if I uh, ask for a pay rise? No. Mm. What you will do is you'll find out. You're sort of uncovering Earth. Like mm. I see it as like you're stuck in an island mm. and you're exploring. You've explored this much, mm. but the island is like this big. Right. So the more decisions you make which are uncomfortable and uneasy, you're actually just like unveiling 
paths. New territory. You, yeah, new territory, exactly. Okay. And as soon as you understand where you sit within this wider territory, you've mm. got a much wider understanding of what you can actually achieve, what mm. you can get away with, mm. um, and how to deal with really awkward situations. Mm. So if you ask for the, the pay rise, or if you try and ask uh, for something from someone, yeah. and that feels like a daunting thing to do, mm. it's like, oh, that could be a no, that could be a rejection. Mm. And in actual fact, it's not a no, it's not a yes, but it's uh, oh maybe yeah. yeah if you do yeah. this, this, and this, then we can talk. Mm. Then actually, that path is just like oh that wasn't so bad at all. Like it wasn't good or bad. It was just un- understanding or getting yeah. more information about it to then yeah. go back. Or it could be a yes, or it could be a no. Mm. But now you know. <laughs> yeah. And then you're you're in a place of more confidence, ironically, mm. because now you know the answer rather than uncertainty yeah and uh, uncertainty is like the worst place any human could be in i agree like uncertainty is the worst i agree like even even if somebody like putting this back to youtube if somebody reads a title and then the thumbnail doesn't correlate with the title that builds a certain element of uncertainty yeah. in, the, in the viewer so they're yeah. gonna go mm, no i don't like it yeah they they're gonna move on to something mm. else um, same context as if somebody comes up to you randomly and says, Oh, hello, I'm John. Mm. And you're going, Okay. I don't know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> like, like, give me something to work with here. Yeah. Oh, I'm here for the interview. All oh, right, okay. You're okay. There. So it's, it's creating that, um, is being able to put something in a box in your own head. If you've got something which is unfileable or something mm. that doesn't correlate, mm. then you're going to go, mm, yeah. Panic. This is weird. I don't know where I stand. Right. I'm going to go away from this. Mm hmm. And it's the same con- the same thing with um, there's a guy called Rory Sutherland who's mm-hmm. a behavioral economist and he talks about this topic and many others. But um, if you have a product, mm. say you've got a laptop and you've got like 20 different versions of this laptop, you're less likely to buy the laptop if there's 20 versions because you don't know which one. Which to one buy. to choose? Yeah. Like, I mm, I have that issue. <laughs> I, there's too many. I'm not going to deal with this. No. Because it builds an uncertainty. Because mm-hmm. now you're questioning your own decision. Oh, yes. I should probably know more about this. Mm. I'm out of my depth here. Mm-hmm. Whereas if there's two options and one says this is good for creative people, this is good for logical people, then yeah, you go, like, well, cool. I know which one I'm getting. Yeah. Or there's a pink one and a yellow one. So yeah. Okay, yellow one. Mm. Like, Isn't there that story as well? Like if you put a donkey equidistant between two um, plates of food, the donkey is going to die of starvation. Because the donkey can't decide which way to go. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm looking that up. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. I, I forgot what it was. But yeah, it's basically along those lines of... Because both are equidistant, so he can't make the decision where to go to eat. And while wow. they, they will take so long to decide that they will die. And that's the whole point of if you have two options, don't spend too much time choosing. You should just take action, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you find out the results of one. Yeah. And then you can always And then you can recalibrate. Change. Yeah. Calibration. That is yeah. that's a good word here. Yeah. 100%. It is. it is. 100%. Yeah, I think a lot of people including me, we're all scared of rejection, right? And yeah. hearing the word no and not getting the scenario that you really 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 want. But then if the answer is no anyway, <laughs> what's the point of pushing that answer further into the future? Yeah. You might as well know and then just move on. Yeah. And yeah. then, uh, when you said that of the pitch you've got in your own head, I think that's part of the fear factor. Yes. Because if you're applying for a job or wh- whatever it is, you've got this picture in your head of how it's going to look or how you mm-hmm. want it to look. Mm-hmm. It's good to have an outcome in mind. Oh, yeah. Right? Because yeah. you've got to have that of like, what do I actually want from this? And that creates focus, mm-hmm. which is great. But I think building up this like scenario of, okay, I'm going to walk into the office and mm-hmm. I'm going to going to sedge the conversation into me getting a raise <laughs> yeah. and then I'm going to see how they go with that and then yeah. eventually once you're in the room that usually goes out the window anyway yes because they'll say something you go, oh fuck this isn't part of the plan <laughs> and they'll say oh yeah I've been thinking about giving you a raise like, oh shit that wasn't part of the plan either no. uh, okay. yeah <laughs> um, so yeah generally it's just completely and I think that's what we do to survive mm. we've got to pre-plan and sort of think of every possibility mm. but I think ultimately when it comes to the crunch that generally goes out of the window and um yeah, the scenario is completely different to what we anticipate. Mm. And I think that's part of building confidence is going through enough of those scenarios to figure out and have the um, the foresight to know, like, it's good to plan in your own head, but actually this is all pointless mm. in the future because it's going to go out the window anyway. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, and I, I think to build confidence in yourself mm-hmm. in the context of magic, because I've done it for so long, I'm... I now understand, or I've found, uh, I understand my own capabilities, mm-hmm. 
and I know I have an idea of where the four walls are right and, and what I can get away with mm-hmm. what I can do if something doesn't quite go right mm-hmm. like um and I also know what it's like to completely fuck something up and it's and I don't die yeah <laughs> like there's 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 <laughs> oh this story I hate this story mm-hmm. so this is about five or six years ago mm-hmm. I was doing a booking corporate booking and there was this piece of magic I planned for them there's a room of like 50 tables mm. 10 tables of 10 so I had to get hundreds of playing cards and I spent about four hours dealing out cards into um, small packets of four mm. putting them in plastic bag uh, little envelopes actually I did this for every single table in the room mm-hmm. so I spent hours prepping this so everyone needed four cards so right. every I went, got there to the gig early mm. dished out all of these envelopes right you're set so I'm doing close-up magic throughout the event. Mm. I don't get to everyone because there's a lot of people. Yeah. And I said to the That's booker, um, I'd like to do a big finale for everyone. Mm. Great. Yeah, okay, you can do that. And then I'll introduce the host and the host mm. can come on and then give out the awards or whatever they're yeah. doing. So, giving out the envelopes, doing close-up magic. Everyone's mm. loving it. Everyone's mm. like, you know, getting into the magic. Yeah. So, great. Okay, good. Good vibes. Then it comes to the point where they're just finishing desserts. Mm. Right, I better get ready for the stage bit. And I've got these jumbo playing cards. I've got four of my own. Okay. This whole piece of magic revolves around people following instructions, mm-hmm. okay? okay? And generally, about 5 to 10% of the audience get it wrong. Okay. Because that's just the nature of people. Yeah. People are going to mess they this up. They can't follow instructions. Yeah, they, they yeah. can't follow instructions and they're a little bit drunk. That's yeah. Fine. So that's fine, but the rest of the people get it right. Mm. So I go through the instructions. I say, right now, uh, take one card, turn it mm-hmm. upside down, mm-hmm. sit on one playing card, mm-hmm. swap one with a friend, tear mm-hmm. one up, throw that away. Then mm. you're left with one half of a playing card right and then the, the piece that they were sat on mm-hmm. so I, I've then got these jumbo cards and I've got one piece here mm-hmm. and I can see I know what card this is and mm. I can see this has gone wrong oh so this card is facing backwards nobody knows this is wrong yet and I'm sure. going there going if, if I've done this wrong they've all done it wrong they've all done it wrong okay because I've done I'm mimicking their instructions yeah. so I'm like and I look <laughs> I look at the floor because my head's going there's no way out there is no way out of this. I've built it all up to this one dramatic point, and it's it's gone wrong. So I look down and go, oh, and uh, oh, and I should match. <laughs> Literally just did that. Ten <laughs> percent of the audience went way because <laughs> so they're the ones that got it wrong. <laughs> the rest of them are all looking at me as if to go, no. no and the, all, all you heard was this room of just people going, did I go right? I don't know. Where did, where did I go wrong? Fashion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I wanted to die. Oh my god. Went, Thank you very much. Uh, so introducing you... Sally, your host. So you saved it? No. No, but you didn't show them. Oh no, I yeah, but I picked it up off the floor. Like I just blatantly picked it oh, up. Oh, you clearly picked it yeah, up from the like, floor. And everyone was just sort of going, they're a bit confused. They're like, oh, but 10% Should of them. Should we pick it cracked. up? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so some people got it right. <laughs> some people got it right, which is hilarious to me. Um, but but the, the story of that, and the other funny thing is the host came on, wasn't that fantastic, ladies and gentlemen? I was like, you clearly were not watching. Yeah, what you have not been watching. <laughs> um, but the, the moral of that story is it can get so bad. Mm. That it really doesn't matter. I'm still alive. Yeah. Like nothing went wrong. You have a funny story to tell now. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But did you know where you went wrong afterwards? Uh, I think so. It, it would have been one of the instructions. I just <sighs> mis, mis said something or I did something wrong. I was like, oh no. It's just that moment of just looking at those cards going. Did your oh, heart um, sink? Yeah. Oh God. Like, oh, just the floor swallow me now. Like, and in my <laughs> head, I'm now going to every single place I could possibly go. I'm yeah. Like, right. How do I fix this? Can I turn this into a joke? Can I fix this? Can mm. is there any? And it's like no, there is no way out of this. No. Because so you I, just I, pick it up. I picked it up on the floor. <laughs> oh, well, that should be. They should match. Could, um, could you have just like pretended that it fell out of your hand and then pick it up the wrong one? Because they've all <laughs> fucked up anyway. Ninety percent of the audience are fucking. The whole point is they get it right. They're, They're like, oh, right. that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it only worked for five or ten percent of them. Oh man, oh, wow. it's the worst thing ever. Hey, we survived. Yeah, yeah. But now I know if I'm in that scenario again, mm. I'd probably go down the line of turning it into a joke and just okay. saying, oh, that, that didn't go very well, did that it, guys? Didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed the magic. Could have just been like, this was a test to see how drunk you were, or the drunk people did well. <laughs> Clearly, I've had too much to drink. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So, but now I, I, I'd probably, yeah, either turn it into a joke or try something to. Cover it up in a different... I don't know. I just don't know. I probably would never do that again as a single piece on its own. Yeah, but I, you have the confidence now yeah. to, to deal with when things but, go yeah. wrong. So, yeah, so the yeah. point of that story, sorry. Mm. 
bring it back. The point of the story was to go, now I've been to the edges of what's possible and mm. how bad it can get. Mm. It's not quite as scary. Yeah. Um, and the more I've done that, the more I've figured out actually it's either it's better than I thought or even if it's worse than I thought, at least now I know and I know how to deal with that now. So when I first, uh, well, street performing, for mm. example, great period of confidence. Like, I don't think I've ever been as confident as I was when I was street performing. Mm. Like, the amount that that just strips away any inhibitions mm. is phenomenal. Right. Like, I could stand in the middle of Cambridge and just shout something out mm. and would not care. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, I, would, I wouldn't care. It would Good. not bother me oh, or ask me anything. Yeah. Just shouting, shouting stuff out, saying hello to people really loud, making people feel like, oh my God, what the fuck's going on? Mm. Like I wouldn't, it was completely like non-existent. Wow. It builds you up to a point where you just have to not care. Yeah. Because you need that level of confidence to draw an audience in. Yeah. Because if you don't, then people will lose confidence in you as a performer mm. and then they don't want to stop. Yeah, yeah. Because the whole thing behind street performing is uh, I want to stop an audience which didn't know they, was, they were going to a show today. Mm. And eventually they're going wow to pay. Them. Yeah. Yeah. And they've got to be wowed. Yeah. So what it teaches, what what it teaches, what it, what it taught me, <laughs> was um, how to stop an audience, get them to stay and watch and entertain, mm. and then get them to put something in the hat as a yeah. donation. Um, but that the path to get there was mainly about people management. And it, there's lots of details you can go into, like creating a really firm mm. edge and the, the content that you do has to fit a certain format to get people to stay. Mm -hmm. Using lots of different tricks to make sure they're like basically a YouTube channel. Yeah. Use pattern interrupts and texts yeah. to get people to stay or yeah. punch in or whatever to make it more mm. interesting. So the same tactics, but just in a different mm. context. Um, but yeah, if you're watching a stage show, you're watching a performer and that performer comes across as nervous. Suddenly yeah. now that you feel nervous for them. Mm. Uh, whereas if you're watching someone who's confident and inspiring, mm. you then feel inspired. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So whatever the person on stage or whoever's talking, whatever emotion they're feeling or presenting they're feeling, the audience will then... They mirror it. Yeah. Okay. It's exactly that. So in the context of a street show, you've got people that didn't know there was going to be a show. They didn't know they want to be entertained. Mm. Um, and there's some someone stopped them. If you show any hint of not being in control of that show mm. or not being confident, they're going to walk away. They're gone, yeah. Like, so th when you get heckled as a street performer, mm. you need to be instantly back with a comeback yeah. to be in control. Because as yeah. soon as you lose the control, you've lost the audience. Like, mm. they're gone. Just pull the pin on the show. Like, it's, mm. it's over. Oh, wow. Um, it's <laughs> fascinating. Like, it's so interesting to see how losing control of something, then everybody is, like, it, everyone loses full yeah. confidence in the person. Mm. So no, not interested. So it's like politicians making a faux pas or doing something. Yeah. Then you've, you've lost, con like, lost, con lost confidence in them mm. to run the country. So no, yeah. we're not going to do it. You it's like Churchill got really ill. I was watching, um, I don't know how true the story is, but The Crown. Oh, yeah. Right? Churchill yeah. got ill, but he couldn't tell anyone he got really no, ill. No, because people would lose confidence exactly. in him. And yeah. that, that's really powerful. Yeah. Because he's in a position of like, yes, we're, we're doing these good things. And we're in control of everything. Yeah. I can't possibly be ill. Yeah. Because that doesn't fit the narrative of who I am and what I'm about. It's crazy, isn't yeah. it? And that would affect an entire nation. Mm. Like, it's... Yeah, I, yeah, people are strange. But it kind of makes sense, though, because it's a survival technique, isn't yes. it? Like, the leader has to be um, in control of things, has to be fit and able, and they need yeah. to be know what they're doing, they need to be good leaders. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. If they fail at any of those things, they will move we on We can find one. someone else, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> Human behaviour is so interesting. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Yeah, who knew there's so much of human behaviour involved in performing yeah. and confidence and all of that? Even being but... a group of people. Yeah. Like, you know what it's like telling a story and then you fuck up a line? It's like, oh, I've, just, I've lost them. I've lost, I've lost them. them. Yeah, yeah, you're like... They're not interested anymore. I just fumbled with my words, sorry. And then, and then <laughs> the worst thing is when someone says, oh, no, go on. It's like, oh, no. Because now, now you've made that, like, yeah, I don't want the pity, pity story. I know, I know. That is the worst. Yeah, just like when you're trying to tell a joke, but then it's so funny that you're already laughing and everybody yeah. doesn't care anymore. <laughs> and you're like, no, but trust me, it's yeah, funny. It's really funny. <laughs> I get that all the time. Yeah. Because nobody, nobody gets my sense of humor. Oh, same. I find myself really funny, but people don't seem to agree. <laughs> I've seen the video, Sheen. I've seen the video. I'm online. funny. <laughs> okay. When you say, when you start any sentence with, I'm funny, yes. listen to this joke. No one's going to laugh at that joke. Look, I need to prepare you that it's okay. going to be really funny. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I've never met someone that's had to prepare me. <laughs> you, you are go. you're in for a treat. I am yeah. very funny. I am funny. Just watch out. 
There Just we give go. Them warnings. Exactly. <laughs> well, this has been great, Matthew. Yeah. 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 Thank you for being here once again. Thanks for having me. And Matthew's YouTube channel will be in the description box below. Please go check it out. He does fun stuff and he's promised to be more consistent. <laughs> I'm making you accountable <laughs> to everyone. Oh, man. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Well, thank you, Matthew. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.